Celestials, Race, Complete Story Part 1 Origin The Celestials are powerful extraterrestrial cosmic beings. This alien race influenced key events in human history for mysterious and unclear reasons. They were responsible for key human evolutionary events, such as the genetic offshoot races the Eternals and the Deviants 9 as well as the emergence of superhumans both through the inclusion of the X gene and through beneficial mutation, e.g. Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk when exposed to gamma rays instead of dying. In the beginning, there was only one universe, the first firmament, perfect but alone. It decided to create life, celestial servants. While some of them industriously worshipped it, seeking its approval whenever they created life on their own, which prompted the first firmament to name them aspirants, others, multicolored rebels, comma, who were as many as the stars themselves, comma, wanted their own creations to evolve, for the universe to grow, change and die. That was seen by the first firmament as madness and sacrilege. Celestial War War eventually broke out between the multicolored rebels and the aspirants for the dominion of all existence. The war greatly diminished both groups, desperate, who resorted to powerful weapons to get rid of their opponents, including the aspirants' god-killer armor that they used to win the final battle of the war. After the final battle of the Celestial War, the Aspirants built their fleets and immediately entered a civil war, which gave the Celestials time to recover and crush their opponents' ten. The war ended by shattering the first firmament into pieces. As the rebels detonated their weapons, hundreds of new universes split off from it. The first firmament fled along with the remaining Aspirants, and the new universes formed a collective entity, the Second Cosmos and First Multiverse. Second Cosmos The Second Cosmos, or Second Infinity, was colonized by the rebels. Those celestials evolved their own servitors who they came to call Omegas, in opposition to the First Firmament, who was the Alpha. Seventh Multiverse it was speculated by Reptil that the Celestials may be the cause of the widespread of mammalians in the evolution of life on many quadrants of the cosmos. The Watchers In opposition to the Celestials' apparent agenda were the Watchers. Having sworn an oath of non-interference in species younger than themselves, the Watchers found the Celestials' genetic engineering of such species to be the antithesis of what they believed. Thus, the Watchers and the Celestials were in pointless, as Watchers do not act, conflict for billions of years. Black Vortex The Black Vortex was created 12 billion years by the Celestial Godhead, after a Viscardi named Gera expressed to the cosmic being the desire of their species to explore beyond their potential. Gera was the first of the Viscardi to submit to the Black Vortex's power. One year later, a war between the Viscardi left Gera as the sole survivor of her species. The Monolith The creators of the legendary Black Monoliths were the Celestials, who had sent it to help record vast amounts of data over the centuries. An Arishem lookalike Celestial took off with the Monolith and Machine Man who was inside the monolith at the time. It was never revealed what happened to X-51 during his time with the Celestials. Later, however, the Celestials dumped Machine Man back on Earth after allowing him to travel with them for a time. It is believed that the Celestials indirectly influenced and aided the development of mankind through the Eternals as well as the Northern Egyptians, the Maya, the Incas, the Atlanteans, etc. The Progenitor and the Fallen Four billion years ago, a celestial referred to as the Progenitor crashed onto Earth after it was infected by the Horde. The Progenitor died a sad, lonely death, 
and its body was buried within the earth below the North Pole. The Celestial's diseased body fluid seeped into the earth and percolated through the planet's primeval surface, forever altering the earth's evolutionary trajectory. Loki claimed that this process ultimately gave rise to the mutations and superhuman abnormalities present in many of Earth's inhabitants. A million years ago, a celestial named Zgreb the Aspirant came to Earth in search for the progenitor. The Fallen found the progenitor and became inflicted with the Horde. However, the Horde mutated him into a rabid dark celestial, the first of its kind. Zgreb went berserk and entered into conflict with the Avengers of the Stone Age. They defeated Zgreb and buried it underground in the territory that would become South Africa in modern times. The First Host The loss of the two Celestials drew the attention of the rest of the Celestials, and the First Host came to Earth. The Stone Age Avengers tried to fight the visitors, but they were soundly defeated 15 It has been stated that the first host of Celestials genetically engineered chosen members of the early human population to create the Eternals and the Deviants and developed the X gene that would eventually give rise to mutants. However, Loki has claimed those accounts were a lie and that instead the first host left the Earth as it was after defeating the Avengers. They additionally chose to keep Zgreb buried deep underground to keep the Horde infection contained. According to Loki, the genetic modifications to the inhabitants of the Earth that would give rise to superpowered beings didn't happen because of the first host, but were instead a result of the progenitor's death. It was subsequently deduced by the Avengers that the first host decided to contain the Horde infection because they believed humanity's capacity for mutagenesis and superhuman change meant they possessed the potential to adapt and cancel out the Horde. The Second Host and the Great Cataclysm The second host of the Celestials arrived on Earth circa 16,000 BCE. At the time, the Deviants, who far outnumbered the Eternals and the humans, were in the middle of war against on Atlantis and attacked the Celestial ship. In retaliation, the Celestials landed on Lemuria. At the same time, the Atlanteans opened their magma vents to drive off the Deviants. Either by Celestial will alone, or the combined forces of Atlantis, the Eternals, and the might of the Celestials, the continent of Lemuria was destroyed and Atlantis sunk beneath the sea. This great cataclysm reshaped the Earth's surface. It is also known that near this time, Arishem came into conflict with the Dreaming Celestial. The reason for this conflict is unknown and differing reasons have been given, but may have been about the course of the experiment on Earth 616 the conflict ended with defeat and burial of the Dreaming Celestial under what would later become Northern California near San Francisco. First Century The Celestial Madonna an apparent female Celestial, appeared in 114 AD at the Palace of Zhonghong, a member of the Brotherhood of the Shield in Luoyang. Zhang went to her and revealed him the existence of the celestial egg existing within Earth, and revealed as well that she was carrying a child, something new slash unique slash forbidden. That birth would destroy her in any case, but would need nourishment. As she was hesitating between using Earth, causing quick extinction, or the moon, with cataclysmic consequences on Earth. Zhang Hung proposed an alternative, the Sunday. Bathing herself in the Earth's sun, she was destroyed while her progeny was found by Leonardo da Vinci in 1956. The Third Host The Third Host came to Earth about 1,000 years ago. Once again the Celestials moved across the globe experimenting and testing their handiwork. Wary of the intervention of these alien gods Odin convened a gathering of all the known sky gods like himself and choose three of their number to meet with the Celestials. 
Odin Borson, Zeus Panhellenios, and Vishnu confronted Arishem and were quickly shown that it alone had the power to cut off each and every pantheon from Earth. This led to all the Sky Fathers pledging to not interfere with the Celestials for 1000 years. 11th to 12th century During 1150 AD in the Holo Shan Mountains of northern Mongolia, China, and Sabanur heard of a ruler, who was powered by an immense alien ship which crashed, and sought him out as another immortal. In a confrontation, Nur slew all of Garbashian's guards. Garbashian then sought to humble his fellow forever walker, by revealing the secret titanic vessel. Having had previous experience with futuristic technology, Nur attacked Garbashian and left the other immortal for dead. Not understanding how to kill an immortal, Garbashian survived and fled. After striking down Garbashian, Nur entered the ship and lived on it for many years, not fully understanding how to communicate with it or control it. Using old hieroglyphs, Nur built a large sphinx around the ship, on his own and began to hear a voice inside of his head. The voice belonged to the celestial, Eason the Searcher, who spoke through telepathy and called Nur Apocalypse. Eason presented Nur with the proposition to use the technology on ship to shape the destiny of the world, or simply leave and never remember anything. Nur accepted and Eason stated that one day, maybe in centuries or millennia, the Celestials would come for payments for their gifts. Shortly after finding the ship, Nur and his riders of the Dark were constantly attacked, by a young warrior with a sword and shield calling himself the Traveler centuries later, Thor faced off with the Celestial-powered being called Apocalypse. Seeking revenge, Thor blessed Jarnporn with his own blood to imbue it with the power to pierce Celestial armor. Fourth Host In the 20th century, the fourth host of Celestials returned to Earth to judge the final stage in their genetic experiments 9 to do this, they settled on the Inca Plateau in South America and collected materials and beings from across the globe. The appearance of these enigmatic giants around the world terrified the world's population and triggered the attempted intervention of SHIELD. The Celestials sealed themselves inside an impenetrable dome and began their judgment. Odin, fearful of celestial power and angered by their interference on Earth, gathered the life force of all of Asgard to battle the Celestials for the fate of the Earth. Despite having Thor and the Eternals at his side, the Celestials defeated Odin and spared the Earth after the intervention of Gia and the gift of twelve special humans selected from every pantheon. The fourth host then left Earth erasing the memory of their existence from the minds of humanity. Dreaming Celestial at San Francisco Early in the 21st century, after being manipulated into awakening the Dreaming Celestial, the Eternals learned that was only through the efforts of the Eternal Macri that it did not reset local space-time one billion years past or destroy this corner of the Milky Way galaxy. It was angry over its imprisonment but decided instead to observe and investigate the Earth. The very presence of the Celestial, the Dreaming Celestial as was called now, was initially considered a threat and dangerous to the very existence of humanity and all life on Earth by the Avengers. It was only through the mental intervention of the Eternals that the 2,000-foot Golden Celestial now standing in Golden Gate Park, was accepted by humanity at large. Tiamut As time passed, the Celestial's emotional and mental stability was becoming more and more erratic as it claimed to be questioning the reason for its imprisonment, its place as designated by the One above all, it appeared to the Celestial as an otherworldly bartender who looked like Jack Kirby, and it slash his plans for all of creation. 
The dreaming celestial began exhibiting more and more non-celestial-like behaviors like admiring Iron Man's guile in battle and the undoing of the death of the eternal Thena's human son, so much that Ueta the Watcher began to question the celestial's mental balance. Soon after the High Evolutionary and Mr. Sinister somehow tampered with the dreaming celestial's armor, the Prime Celestial Host came to Earth apparently finally taking an interest in its reawakening. Cyclops' extinction team boldly attempted to bluff down the assembled Celestials and asked them to leave, they consented, but only when the Dreaming Celestial itself, now no longer infested by Mr. Sinister's machinations told them to, pointing skyward. By this time, the Dreaming Celestial's confusion slash questioning of itself was beginning to physically affect the people it communicated with culminating in the death of Macari, the subsequent death of Circe and rebirth of Macari all due to the Eternal's close slash symbiotic relationship with the Celestial. Finally confronting its creator one above all slash Jack it choose to leave this plane of existence with it slash him.